Hi guys, welcome to another Living Nest TV video, David and today guys, we are going to make an educational video about the Workers Museum right here in Newtown. And if you don't know guys, Newtown has top class museums. Let's say Sayabono, Workers Museum, Museum of Africa. It's also very close to, to the origin center, very close to here. But again guys, I want to show you guys everything, but today we're going to do Workers Museum, so guys, make sure sure that you stay tuned to learn a lot again this is only for educational purposes again guys stay tuned welcome to the workers museum the site of labor migration uh, i'm gonna start by showing you the the the, the timelines for the workers museum which was uh, built in 1913 as a cleansing and sanitation sanitary compound uh, and in 1927 it became a uh, electrical workers compound 1972 it became general municipal workers compound and in the late in the 1980s it became storage facility then 1995 it became workers library and a museum and then uh, during that period then by 2010, I think it was during the World Cup, uh, the museum was uh, declared a workers' museum. And I'm going to take you through the history of the compound and how the workers were recruited in Johannesburg to come and work in the municipality. So you must follow me there. Okay. As you can see here, these are the men who came from Johannes, from different uh, African regions to work as migrant workers. Uh, mainly they came only with their... Uh, they didn't have anything, they brought only their... Um, it, it was so sad because you can see here, the, the, those who were fortunate are the ones from Lesotho because they will bring the blankets. But if you are not coming from Lesotho, then you come in without a blanket. You are coming to Johannesburg for the first time. And the workers, as you can see them here, they are carrying their packages from home. And it will be like your chicken, dumpling package. And then you are now going to be recruited to work in the municipality. So the systems of migrant system, they, they continued uh, being, uh, workers being recruited to work in the municipality. But now I'm going to take you through how this recruitment were taking place in Johannesburg. So as you can see now, uh, the migrant system also affected women because now, as you can see then, women are left there at, in the homesteads with their children, men, because men had to leave and come to Johannesburg. As you can see there, women are carrying their babies there. And they, imagine now if you are a woman left with your children, their husband is going to Johannesburg for a period of 18 months, he doesn't come back home. And then now you can see those who are able to see their husband coming back home there, they are dressing with those uh, trousers with patches because now the trousers with patches, they've got uh, letters inside those patches. Uh, I think I'm going to demonstrate how the speeches were done. And now they, they put the letters inside and the money inside. And this man now is carrying uh, the messages and everything for all these women that are, are sitting here to just give them those messages and the money, maybe if their husband has given them their money. So their husbands now, they are not coming back home. They are engulfed by the city. So these women now sometimes they have to raise kids on their own. But the unfortunate part of it is that if you are a boy child now it was going to it was very difficult because now you are not going to be raised by a father but you are going to be raised by a mother and now these migrant systems they affected uh, families because they disintegrated the family orientation so now you see down the the, the, the kids and the mothers here now they are raised without their fathers and the, the husbands now they had to now sign the contract for 18, 18, 18 months they don't go back some of them they never went back home and that's how they sometimes this uh, uh, migrant systems have affected people because where uh, male workers never came back home because of of the the the, the migrant system okay let's go to next to the next panel Uh, 
this is very interesting here now we are seeing this is the 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 compound structure as you can see at the back there these are the workers uh, compound managers houses where they stay with their families but on the other side is the migrant workers who were only allowed to stay there with uh, without their families so i i think the the setup that we are going to be seeing today is to show you how these men they were they were allocated those dormitories in terms of uh, stay, uh, sleeping arrangements so uh, but what 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 I, what, I, what I don't understand is that all uh, in in the compound houses there you can see that um, the the managers have their families with them but on the other side the men they don't have their families with them so the, the, then it shows that the apartheid system divided our our people in that in that in that in that way that they they were separating them from their families so in here it was like constricted to only male so this male they found themselves having to stay in the compound without being visited by their wives their children their families so it was so sad because now you wouldn't even have a, that family gathering or whatever but at the back you'll be noticing that all these white compound managers they will have their fun with their families and so that's how apartheid divided us as people and then you'll see also the managers compound houses they, they the the way they looked they were so beautifully done i mean the the the, the, the houses were spacious beautifully crafted but uh, here uh, you'll see how they look when we go inside then we had this uh, lock up room together with the tree so if they, they were about the, the workers were given about 28 uh, rules in the compound and if you found yourself in the compound you don't obey the rules that were given when you arrive in the compound then you are locked up in the room and you will be poured up with the uh, cold water and you'll be chained and then you'll be thrown out of the the compound but now with the tree also this tree is got about it's almost a hundred years old and the, the tree that you see there a worker who disobeyed compound laws could be chained to the tree all night and locked up in uh, in that room if it is not uh, occupied so it, it was like you you are coming in the compound to work as a, as a as a worker to contribute to the economy of the country but you are treated like a prisoner and the unfortunate part of it is that you don't have a trade union to represent you or if you have a cry about the conditions of service there was no one you could communicate with them so uh, we are fortunate today that we have trade unions in our country whereby if we are not happy you are able to to go in a municipal uh, uh, union to say i'm not happy then at least we'll have a shop to, to represent you but in this during these periods i mean there was no such thing as a trade unions so meaning that if you are a worker, you are treated like a prisoner. So now let's move on to the next one. I'm going to ask my colleagues to join me on this one. Uh, arrival into the city, they arrive in the city in different forms of transport. As you can see, these ones are on the uh, 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 plane and these ones are at the uh, Old Park Station. They are now arriving to go uh, into their different uh, destinations of work. And as you can see, all of them, as I've indicated, that they are all carrying their things from home like they are packages from home provisions Nyana, of your, your 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 chicken and your dumpling as you can see those things these are the only things that you are bringing into johannesburg for the first first time so all of them now they are heading towards albert street as you can see all of them they are carrying stuff to go because they don't know actually where they are going to so here they are now in johannesburg the johannesburg that you see it today this was johannesburg in the past the tj time the tk uh, time and you can see the segregation is taking place there whereby now white people had to walk on the other side of the road and the black people have to go on the other side but look at that corner over there there will be confrontation taking place there because you were not allowed to mix with white people there 
So if then there will be confrontation, there will be beating up taking place there, and the police van will be just around there at the corner there. Uh, if you are not misbehaving and you'll be put straight and back home, so you'll be deported immediately back home. As you can see them now, they are working towards Albert Street, which was a court where now they are going to get their permits to be recruited to work in the compound. In the, in the municipality. But remember now, the, we are not only talking about the municipality, municipal workers, but we are also talking about uh, mining. So we must uh, bear in mind that we are, not, we are uh, describing the municipal uh, workers and also the, the mining workers. So they, but because they were operating from the same model that was utilized by apartheid era uh, systems. So then that's where now you see the difference there. Thank you. You want to? <laughs> we are going up now. We are going to take you through to the the recruitment of workers into the the the, the, the municipality and also mining sector. So here I'm going to allow my colleagues to get involved also. Uh, these are the workers now, they arrive in Albert Street and now they are confronted with uh, white administrators over here. And remember now when they are confronted with this, they are now going to be losing their identity because the white administrators are not going to be able to capture their names and their date of birth. So meaning that they are losing themselves from that day. As you can see here, yeah, the recruitment is taking place. You can take the So after the arrival of workers from rural areas, different from all different parts of Southern Africa, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and all that, these guys, they come here dignified, well-dressed up, with high hopes of starting new life for their families and providing for their kids. And, and, and then uh, after they got arrived here, there's white administrations, of which like Mam Belinda said, they will have problems with writing their names or pronouncing them. This is where people are starting to be given a numbers, number five. So you get to be known as number five and already they, they, you're no longer Tabo or, 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 or Tsepo or whoever. And then you go through inspection. There's a doctor there, as you can see. He's smoking there. He's, all these men, you can see, there's kind of like shame on their faces. You know, they're looking down. You know, they are stripped naked. They are being checked. Their private parts, whether they are fit to work in, in sanitation and electrical. And, and you sit and you ask yourself, like all these checkups, how, do, how does it come to bring it together that these guys will be doing the kind of job? that they are doing. So also humiliation is there, you know, body shaming, there's a lot of things, people they, you know, you, you come here a dignified man and then after 18 months when you go back home to your family, your wife, you know, lo you're no longer that person who came here to the compound. I just want us now to look at the front there, there's a workers uh, a trade union that was formulated in 19. Uh, eight, uh, 85. Let's go down there. Uh, after all these workers have suffered all the, the humiliation, we've got now on the 30th November 1985, where there was a formulation of COSATU, Workers Unite, One Country, One Federation. Uh, it was good because now you see now the workers started now to find themselves. They can fight for anything. And currently in the municipality, the situation has now changed because workers, they've got two unions that they can, it can represent them. So now the workers, they've got rights to complain. They've got rights to fight. They've rights to anything. So now the workers are able to to, to raise their issues and they are now able to be heard by the, the system. So in the past there was absolutely no, nothing like that. So we are going to move away from COSATU and uh, I think there's a, then we can move on to, to the next panels, which is your 
the one that I want to just emphasize that during this 1985 formulation of the trade union, uh, South African Congress of African Trade Unions, uh, I think our president, Sir Ramaphosa, said what we have to make clear is that the giant has risen and will confront all that stands in its way. So the statement that uh, uh, Comrade Ramaphosa has uh, stated there was to say workers must unite and be one. And what we are seeing now in our country at the moment is that the workers are now divided. So we've got so many formation of uh, trade unions and uh, as a museum we are saying to, 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 to the uh, trade unions to say why don't you be one trade unions that can deal with all the, 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 the issues of workers. And uh, I, I think I'm going to go back into that uh, statement that was said by Comrade uh, Ramaphosa to say we have to be, we need to all stand uh, and fight as one. All right, so now we are going to go now and see the transitions as time went on. Uh, we, we will receive our first democratic, which is the, the 1994. Uh, democratic elections when they are taking place in our country whereby a lot of things they change in our country it was the beginning of our black uh, people getting their freedom i think the migrant systems also they impacted on the people's life and the people the workers uh, themselves and then then the, this also shows how the legacy of the migrant systems are still pertaining in our country. So the legacy of migrant labor in the 2000s, uh, they are also showing that uh, migrant systems are still uh, happening in this country. So migrant is still uh, with us, the poverty, the division between towns and countries, they, and they reserve their barren land and the compounds and informal settlements, and the new diseases and foreign workers who continue to suffer violence and discrimination, women in the cities who continue to live on the margins. And these are still continuing in our country. They are still stuck with us. We are, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. And the only thing is for the workers to know their rights. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Or oh, 10 minutes. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, what are we are going to share with you is that the history of Workers' Museum did not only rely on researchers, but uh, the story was told by the ex residents who were staying in the compounds who were the ones who were telling us the stories of how they lived in the compound. The one that I want to share with is the one of Chris Mabazo, who has worked in the canteen of Municipality in Johannesburg Electricity Department. And the good thing is that he became a shop steward for South African municipal workers. And uh, it shows that he came in and arrived in Johannesburg as a young man. And he started working, but when he left the city, he was a happy man and uh, he stayed here in the compound and he was sharing the room with other people and he kept the bed at Van uh, Bierk compound in the city centre. And uh, when he, we interacted with him, he told us the stories and that is why I'm happy that at least uh, this history that we are sharing with you today is not the history of something that was written by a certain Mamang uh, somewhere, but at least the stories of the ex residents themselves, Bontate, Jacob Marke, Chris Mabaso, Bontate, Mbusin Lofu, Bofilimon Libeko. And uh, fortunately, we had also a woman who followed his husband, Noctula Rose Quena, who was born in Ladysmith. He said, I'm following my husband. She's now working once a week at the orphanage in Soweto. She lives in a, with her daughter and children in Soweto, but still consider Ladysmith uh, Lady her home. Women also had a struggle because their husband left. 
and when they left their home the women had to follow them and i think it was like you know a, a logic for them to follow their husband because some of them they never return home then i want also to do this poem of mizabuken poet govierna de bulemos when he said which of us which of us will come back which of us which of us will die which of us will come back to see women to see our lands to see our oxen which which of us will die which of us which of us which of us and when you look at these mountains you can see that this is in eastern cape where the women are waiting for their husband to come back home but unfortunately they never came back home and then the woman was saying father please buy your son a pair of trousers and then you must take good care of my field cultivate it properly and plant every crop a woman will say you must write letters father and a man i will send the money for her tax and i shall send the money a woman said please don't forget us here at home and this is a poem it just shows that there was a desperation for women for family unit to to a uh, family to unit to come together but not to have the disintegration of family units okay let's go to the next one So as you can see over here, as I've indicated that the compass, they were all over uh, Johannesburg. And here we are now in Newtown, but we had different ones in Mayfair, in all city suburbs, Dorenfontein, Bass Valley, Eastern uh, uh, Native Township, Johannesburg Village Deep. So they were scattered all over Johannesburg and we also had Alexander at the top there. As you can see, hostels now, after now, uh, legacy of compound is hostels. So you arrive in Johannesburg for the first time. This is the room that you are given to sleep in. It is a concrete bed and there are rules, 28 rules. And you, when you make noise past noise hour, it was an offense. If you wake up before time, it was an offense. If you miss work, it was an offense. So having a fight, but being beaten by the compound manager was a punishment. That than losing your job. And this is where the workers, they found themselves. The workers were expected to be workers, but if you don't follow these rules, no African shall brew liquor, any kind of in the common premises. You'll be locked up in this room if you don't follow all these rules. And this is there you now been stuck. When if you are troublesome, they will lock you in this room. Maybe you came late, back, drunk, or you had fight. In the morning the security guards would unchain you and they would wish they would just pour a bucket of water over you and then you would meet the manager at the office and this whole process has really created a problem in Johannesburg because we found people who were thrown out in in the compounds uh, in, during the period of 20 to 2009 and they are still now stuck in Johannesburg. They are homeless. They never be able to go back home because to go home is like you have to pay 500 and something for transport to go back home, maybe in Eastern Cape or Northwest. So these are the conditions of uh, the, the environment where they are now the sleeping arrangement. You are given only just a bed, a blank bed without a mattress. And it took time to get used to this sleeping arrangement. I remember that our beds had bugs and cockroaches all clothes are hanging right on top of our beds and there's no hot ropes you also don't have a fridge but you buy meat and you have to hang it to make uh, your your built on there's always dried meat hanging inside and sometimes the compound laws affected us in different ways for instance when you wanted to go home a manager would ask you going home or morning the deceit will not revive you so these are the conditions and you are very lucky if you are coming from Lesotho because at least coming from Lesotho every month at least you'll be able to, to use your, your blanket because Lesotho always you carry and we've got this man who's doing a sewing over there the man who's the, who was playing a big role because every time people have to go home he will sew them uh, those trousers with patches where then their money will be inserted in those different colors 
of patients where at least can be transported home to give to their uh, families. But uh, because of the people were robbed in the trains, then at least those workers will be able to get my home safely. Okay, so now we've got the showers in the hostel. There was no privacy in the showers. Uh, sometimes the compound, compound managers provide hot water in buckets, but there were no taps, but every few cases there was no water at all. And what, I, what, I, what is said about this uh, uh, setup is that sometimes you come in from the bucket system, you have been working the whole night emptying bucket system, then you come back to a compound, you want to wash your body, the water is not coming out. That was so sad and it was very appalling conditions at all. Let's go to the next one. And then uh, the leisure activities, I think, uh, as we all see here, during the weekends, because the workers are not working, the compounds uh, workers, they will now play Moraba Raba, which is this uh, bot over here. I think they were very good in terms of taking the, their, their leisure uh, by playing this Moraba Raba. And uh, the, 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 the legacy of compounds is hostels now. Today we see now South Africa, we've got now hostels, whereby now hostels have been converted into family units now we are now seeing a, a new trend whereby now we see women coming to stay with their husbands in the hostels and now is it has changed now scenario because now uh, this uh, new arrangement now it is now also creating same same similar problems of overcrowding in the hostels, overcrowding in 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 the the, the, the sleeping uh, quarters and dormitories and all that but uh, i think there's quite a lot of co uh, uh, existence of different cultures in the hostels now. Go put their toilet. Wait. So these are the, the toilets that the 173 workers who were staying in this compound had to share. So this is our toilet system that we had here for our workers, our grandparents. So they all had to use this communal with no privacy, with, with nothing. Because workers sometimes they, they will cleanse their system you know, when you have a runny stomach, there's no privacy, there's nothing. And if you look at behind there, behind is the shower room. So the shower room as well, you know, one will be coming to the toilet and then the other one will be that side with no privacy at all. So this were appalling situation that the workers were experienced with. And it's worthwhile history to look at. The, the, the museum is for free and uh, the, we are open from Monday to Friday uh, to, to, to Sunday. Mondays people are welcome to come to the museum uh, for free and then uh, we are all you are all welcome to come and view our museum for free thank okay you. guys there you go this is the end of the video i hope you guys now know more about the workers museum right here in utah make sure you come here yourself with your family don't bring too many people because it it ruins the experience you need to be with your mind wide open to listen and and learn because the history that we learned today is the history of every city in the world how to build the city how to build the country unfortunately that's that's history and you know again guys make sure you share subscribe and destroy that like button and we will see you in the next living in a CTV video